in the comments. List at least five non-straight male characters. This will help for a future video. So for simplicity's sake, when I say lesbian, I'm referring to women love women presenting relationships. And when I say gay, I'm referring to men love men presenting relationships. Got it? Good. Not all representation is treated fairly. Example, when shows have POC main characters, they're usually of the lighter hue. How often do you see dark skinned, not tanned, I'm talking mucho melanated mofos as the leads? Or how about LGBTQ plus relationships? I don't know about y'all, but I've noticed a growing number of lesbians and bisexuals in animation, which is great. Even the number of trans and non-binary characters are increasing. Still need to work on the <laughs> correct species though. But hey, progress, I guess. It's wonderful when you see yourself in the media. And of course, networks love being able to brag about how inclusive they are. They're like, look at all this pride. Yep, we approved it since it's giving us such good publicity. And we only mildly put our showrunners through hell to avoid international backlash. Buy our merch! <laughs> Jokes aside, I would like to just, you know, raise a teeny tiny question that's been on my mind for some time now. Why don't you keep that same energy for gay men? Huh? Huh? <laughs> but before I can dive into this, let me make something abundantly clear. I'm a woman and the first time I like even saw gay characters were through Yaoi, which is an anime slash manga genre written for and by women that basically fetishizes two pretty men hooking up. Now, I was never into the objectification these gay leads were subjugated to, but I was invested in their stories, which was rare to find a yaoi that treated the men as people and not just props for some weird fantasy. But luckily there's bada manga, basically yaoi written by and for gay men. Also, some female writers prioritize story over smut. I mean, there's still smut, but not at the expense of the story or characters. Okay, let's continue. We've seen lesbians go from the background to being full pioneers of their own shows, like She-Ra and Harley Quinn, for example. There's more lesbian couples than ever. And we're seeing the same transition with gay characters. Bo and Willow, from She-Ra and the Owl House, respectively, have two dads. South Park! Though not a show I'd go for representation, they've been getting better on handling their gay couples. Like when Mr. Slave and Big Gay Al, yes, that's his name, I know, I know, it was like early 2000s, uh, got married in season 9, and much later, I'm talking season 19, Craig and Tweak might have gotten together to please their town, but they are a genuine couple that actually like each other. And it's not just an act, because in later episodes, they're shown to care for each other, and their personalities don't change just because they're in a relationship now. Tweak is still an anxious spaz, and Craig is still apathetic. But gay relationships have also been treated as a last minute thought to score diversity points. Nothing more infamous than the Voltron staff. We were baiting everyone to thinking that we'd see Shiro with his boyfriend. But unfortunately, Adam dies because that's lore, thus initiating the bury your gaze trope. As unintentional as it was, it was still in poor taste, and someone should have realized that. And due to the, for once, reasonable fan outrage, they married Shiro off to some random guy we don't know anything about and gave themselves a pat on the back and just called it a day. Hmm. The first on-screen gay wedding between a non-white interracial human couple. And y'all thought Ruby and Sapphire's wedding was revolutionary. In more recent tunes, Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beasts handled their gay couple beautifully. Benson literally says he's gay and later gets a boyfriend, which I already gushed about in great lengths. Check that out but I am baffled that almost no one was talking about Kifo. When it's everything you'd want in a show, a compelling overarching story, world building, passionate voice cast, banging music, and POC main characters, all wrapped up in a nice 30 episode package. And at least to me, the pacing never felt too rushed or slow. It was just right. And even though it's on Netflix, like She-Ra, made by the same studio, like She-Ra, and has LGBTQ representation, like she <laughs> What? No, there aren't any lesbians. Well, I mean, they did have plans for one couple, but... Are you serious? 
So people only care for a show with LGBTQ representation only if there's lesbians. <laughs> oh, so not just lesbians. Huh, what a relief. I almost thought. <laughs> Bisexual women too. But when their partner is also a woman. <laughs> so lesbian presenting couples, basically, is what you're telling me. Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> Well, for better or for worse, we all took the L for this one. You know, I find it fascinating that women can explore their sexuality more freely than men. And that's accepted or even expected to a certain extent. And yeah, I got a lot to say about lesbian representation too. And as I'm writing this script, I have like two more in the works. Y'all about to get an earful of me. But back on topic. Why can't we be happy to see two men in love like when we see two women in love? What's wrong with men exploring their sexuality and experimenting? Why can't we support gay men without fetishizing or belittling them? It ain't that hard! I know the kill all men people might not have exceptions. And honestly, why gay men that imitate black women be working my nerves? But believe it or not, it's healthy for men to feel. When I watched Yuri on Ice and saw how Victor and Yuri's relationship blossomed into love, it melted my heart. And here's the kicker. That's a sports anime. Yeah, surprise. Ice dancing is a sport. Dancing is a sport. Get over it. These guys got a whole ass beautiful backstory to their first meeting. And the more I watch it, the more my romantic masochism <laughs> is pleased. Because not only do I get to enjoy a beautiful story, gay men could see themselves in these characters, relate to them, and be reassured that it's normal to have these feelings for another person and explore them. The only thing you, that you should be worried about is if they're in your age range. Always check for ID, and that goes for everyone. So I'll ask again, where's that same supportive energy for gay men in media? Hmm? Oh, of course, why didn't I see it sooner? The hetero male gaze. Defined as the act of depicting women and the world in the visual arts and in literature from a masculine heterosexual perspective that presents and represents women as sexual objects for the pleasure of the heterosexual male viewer. Thank you, Wiki. I imagine that seeing a wholesome love story between a gay couple wouldn't get too many hetero men's rocks off. Mm, that's a shame because that's their internalized homophobia talking. That's their toxic masculinity showing? Thinking that gay men and men in general showing stereotypical feminine traits are somehow lesser? Ooh, even though that's hella misogynistic to associate femininity as a weakness? Ooh, but y'all ain't ready for that conversation. So I've come to the conclusion that a combination of the hetero male gaze, which is usually a white one, internalized homophobia, and toxic masculinity is probably why we don't see as many, or at least good, gay couples in media. Especially non-white interracial couples. Which I'll expand upon further in a part two of this video, so stay tuned for that. But for now, just know that gender is a social construct. Everyone should be able to express themselves however they want, so long as you're not physically hurting anyone. Just because I wear pants or suits, it doesn't add or take away from my femininity or masculinity. Just like when men wear skirts or dresses. That doesn't make them lesser. Y'all will praise and encourage straight men for wearing dresses. So why not the gays? Ooh, double standard. <laughs> I hate it. Clouds don't have genders. Y'all need to stop picking fights. You ain't gonna win. Mind your own damn business before giving yourself a heart attack. The last thing we need is more stupidity in the hospitals. For every LGBTQ male-identified individual, please know that you deserve to be depicted as more than just lustful deviants, punchlines, or quote-unquote threats to masculinity. You deserve to be more than just the gay dads and background characters. Your stories have every right to be told because it can encourage other gay youths to love themselves and literally save their lives. As elders, we owe it to the LGBTQ youths to offer them a safe space where they can feel comfortable in their skin and to fully express themselves and learn about themselves. This wasn't an option for some of us growing up and we were left to figure it out on our own. I just want y'all to know that you're not alone in this. A lot is going on in the world, like all the time. And it's easy to feel isolated that no one understands you. I might not, but I'm willing to listen. <laughs>